tell me how you feel about this, this verdict. Well, it, it was a big relief. When the jury said, yes, they found him guilty, it was like a rock being lifted off our chest. Right. And how long did they deliberate? I think between four and five hours. The only moment of doubt was when the jury came back so quick. Right. Because typically that means it's going to be a, a defense verdict. And then they came back in our favor, which is great. And then he made statements at the press conference. What was your reaction to that when he's talking about your sister? He got up there and called us posers. And to me, it was almost like a threat. He basically said that we got away with it once and we're not going to be so lucky to get away with it again. He can't even say sorry. All he said was that he has been found innocent by the law enforcement, and that's the ground that he's standing on. Right. And there was a civil award. You asked for one penny in damages, which you actually got, but then there was more to it than that. This is not about money. And so we actually uh, asked the jury to come up with the amount mm -hmm. that they thought was appropriate to award my mother. And the jury came up with the number on their own. Okay, why the one penny? To make the point that this was not about the money? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How long did the trial go on? The trial went on for six weeks. Right. Keith, can you walk us through it? We were always very confident we were going to win this case. But what was really interesting is I talked to a juror. They'd actually decided the day before that Adam was guilty. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of hours, that had occurred. Uh, the next day, they just came back to talk about the money. So that was, I think that's another... Uh, showing that the evidence here was very strong. Pretty overwhelming. Spending a lot of time in <clears throat> trials myself, I've always said that your story goes a whole lot better if you're the only one telling it. And that's not the case in a trial. There's another mm -hmm. side. And the defense presented a, a, a vigorous defense here. And their defense was that there were 29 witnesses and no testimony whatsoever that Adam harmed Rebecca. They said there was no evidence that, that he hit her head four times, strangled, bound, and threw her off the balcony, that Rebecca's footprints were the only ones that were on the balcony, that there was no Adam DNA fingerprints or footprints that were found, that according to the DNA expert, everyone sheds DNA. How did you explain that? How did you counter that? Well, see, what, they, what they're saying is there's no Adam DNA, no Adam fingerprints. And that's true. But what's also true is there's nobody's DNA. There's nobody's fingerprints. Um, you know, on the, the paintbrush that was used to paint the, uh, the, the phrase on the door, she saved him, can you save her? No fingerprints, no DNA. On the paint on the tube, brush. on the brush, on the tube of paint, which I think you might have over there. Mm -hmm. Whoever painted that door had to squeeze that tube 20 times. If you hold that, you will see your fingerprints when you take. You don't need a magnifying right. glass. Right. You can see, see them right on there. So that, you would expect that to be covered with fingerprints and DNA. So this had to be squeezed 20 times in order to write out what was written on the door. door. Right. Yet. And you're, you're saying that the significance is not that there weren't Adam's fingerprints or DNA. There were no fingerprints or DNA. So where were right. Becky's? Right. So did a ghost do it? Oh, there was one fingerprint on the very top on the cap. Right, it was, was up Becky's. here. Yeah, it was up here on top. But even to do this, you have to touch it. You can't have it down and try and close that. I don't know how you could do right. that without having to squeeze this. So this was cleaned, is your theory, to get rid of their DNA. And in so doing, they cleaned everyone's DNA off of it, everyone's fingerprints off of it.